Um, I've got a quite important message today. It's about what's happening in the world. I'm going to talk to you about the sixth mass extinction, the one that's happening right now as we talk here in this room. Extinction is normal. It's a normal part of evolution. But what's happening right now is faster than anything that's been seen before in the geological history. Mass extinction is extinction of a large number of species, plants and animals, from many different habitats all over the world in a short period of time. So, I'm pleased to see lots of geologists in the room. Geologists have a unique perspective. They have a chance to look back in time and to see what happened before. So what do we find? We find if we look back at the last 500 million years, we find five big mass extinctions, the big five. The causes for these are now well known. You've probably heard about the extinction of the dinosaurs caused by an asteroid impact. Some of the mass extinctions were due to climate change, massive volcanism, where lava spews out of fissures and changes the Earth's geochemistry over thousands of years. Climate change, which can have a knock-on effect on things like sea level. But what's happening right now is of a different order. Some, a predator is on Earth, and usually the apex predator is not the most abundant. But in the case of humans, yes. Right now, we're experiencing the sixth mass extinction. Bigger question mark. It's still ongoing. We can't quantify fully. Faster, no doubt. The numbers prove it. And the cause is single. It is us humans here on Earth and our impact. So, what does the science tell us? There is a lot of science. There are biologists, conservationists all over the world studying different species, from microorganisms to polar bears, in all different countries, different habitats. They're coming up with the same sad story. The International Union of Conservation for Nature has set up what they call the Red List. This has been going on for about 40 years. Every couple of years, the red list is updated. The numbers seem to be increasing. We study more organisms, and we find the same story. There's a sliding scale. Vulnerable, endangered, critically endangered, and finally extinct. It seems that many species follow this scale as a sort of slippery slope. It's extremely difficult, although not impossible, thankfully, for species to go backwards along the scale. There are some examples where a species that was extinct in the wild have been successfully reintroduced. There are also examples where a population in decline has been saved from extinction. Unfortunately, it's not the majority. Let's look at the trends. This is just a, a chart showing some groups. Corals are particularly badly affected. 30% decline. Birds, mammals, amphibians, and this is across different ecosystems in different climate zones all over the world. Should we be alarmed? Yes. The current trends are alarming. I've just chosen two quotations from prominent biologists, probably the world's best known conservationists. The present extinction rate, 1,000 to 10,000 times the natural rate. We are in a mass extinction. E.O. Wilson, I hope you've heard of him, probably the world's best known biologist. If the current rates continue, half of all animal and plant species will be extinct by 2100. 
that is in about three or four human generations. Think of your grandchildren. Everybody likes a picture of an animal. So I've chosen the dodo. I'm going to go through some of the causes. We said humans are the primary cause of extinction. Let's go through some of the secondary causes. How have humans affected species numbers? The dodo is extinct. We have this expression, as dead as a dodo. The dodo is a flightless bird about the size of a turkey. Hint, turkeys are good to eat. When humans arrived on the island of Mauritius, they thought that the dodo was quite good to eat too and has been hunted to extinction for food. Humans also brought with them alien species that didn't live on this island before. Dogs, pigs, goats, etc. Those animals uh, harvested or, or ate the dodo eggs. Okay? It only took a hundred years to eradicate the species. Extinct forever. The symbol of extinction. And I'm going to show you now some other animals and plants. I've chosen quite a diverse selection. It's a bit like a, an identity lineup. I could have chosen others and I could go on for about a month before running out of extinct or threatened species. Uh, the silky sifaka. This is a primate on the island of Madagascar, which split from Africa about 100 million years ago. Primates evolved totally differently from other parts of the world. So the silky sifaka is one of about 30 lemurs that live in the forest there. Critically endangered. Hunted for bushmeat, loss of habitat, slash and burn agriculture, logging, and cutting of trees for fuel. Elk horn coral. Corals are very important because the coral ecosystem is the basis of the food chain in the oceans. Corals also provide protection for coastal areas, breeding grounds for fish. The elk horn coral is in decline. Um, this is a species that lives in tropical waters. White band disease, increasing ocean acidity, ocean warming, physical damage, anchors, tourism, human pollution, sedimentation, and also invasive species that humans may bring around with them when they travel. Still in the seas and closer to home, a bit closer to Sarawak, the hawksbill turtle, also critically endangered. This is a species that once had a very large population thriving in tropical waters all around the globe. Now critically endangered, the numbers are dwindling. Hunted for its beautiful tortoise shell, trapped in abandoned fish nets and other um, marine litter, lost of their nesting habitat and their foraging habitat, marine pollution and tourism. Uh, I believe they're hard to find any hawksbill turtle in waters around here anymore. Staying in the Southeast Asian region, Nepenthes, a pitcher plant. This plant is incredible. It's evolved to capture insects. It captures them and it digests them in the, in the juices that, that sit at the bottom of the pitcher plant. Unfortunately, it has a narrow habitat tolerance. It only lives on certain areas in Sumatra. The habitat being restricted, if this habitat is damaged, the species looks to be declining. Probably will not make it. I couldn't give a talk and show animals without including a cave, or at least a cave creature, and to also show that human impact has even reached underground. The Indiana bat, a bat species that's found in Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, the cave regions of the United States, used to be vast populations. In winter, they hibernate underground in caves. In the summer, they go into the forest to forage. 
So it's tricky to conserve. We must maintain their both habitats. Human disturbance in the caves, commercialization of the caves, too many visitors disturbing them, urbanization and development around the caves, change the, the chemistry and the temperature, loss of the summer forest habitats where they used to, to forage. Endangered. Maybe we've still got time. Okay, little cute uh, creature. The axolotl salamander. How many of you have heard about it? Maybe one or two. Good. This is a very unusual animal. That's why I chose to, to use it in my talk today. It's a salamander that seems to have uh, never matured to an adult. So the adult axolotl looks a bit like a tadpole. It's got its gills on the outside of the body. You see that furry thing. Oh, by the way, the photo is a lab specimen. It's very difficult to find a Wikimedia Commons photo with actual um, in the wild. They're so rare. Critically endangered. They live in the canals and lakes around Mexico City, one of the world's busiest and biggest developing cities. Um, they're very curious. When you cut off their limb, it can regenerate. So there's a high interest in medical research using these animals. Unfortunately, they also make convenient, cute little pets. They've been hunted for pets, for consumption, for medical research. I forgot to mention that the axolotl is also an important character in the Aztec uh, mythology, in their culture. Urbanization, desiccation of the canals in Mexico City, pollution, particularly bacterial pollution, and invasive fish that were introduced by humans. I uh, thought it's time to show a little plant. Okay. Um, miniature cactus that grows in New Mexico. Unfortunately, once again, very restricted habitat. Apparently, only several square kilometers. Cute little uh, cactus. Often, people would like to have one in their little terrarium in their home. So, illegal collection has dropped their numbers. Urban development, off-road vehicle use, droughts. There have been some attempts to reintroduce. Uh, my talk is not entirely negative, I hope. There is ways of changing the situation. They've been in reintroduced, but it's a big effort and must be sustained for it to be successful. I'll finish off with um, probably quite a well-known animal that has suffered, the golden toad. Okay, this animal lives in, in protected forests in Costa Rica. Protected forests. It's important, and yet it is extinct. This is the first victim of global climate change, not illegal logging or slash and burn agriculture. This animal lived in a protected forest. Unfortunately, the pools where it spawned have dried out, and that caused the population to plummet. Last seen alive in the 1980s also suffered maybe disease and air pollution, made them more vulnerable. So, that's the end of my little lineup of victims. Why should we care? Why should we care about this situation? Well, you probably know that plants and animals provide us with what's called, nicely, ecosystem services. Our rainforests provide oxygen. Our forests also uh, retain the soils and prevent soil erosion. Corals, as I said earlier, mangroves, corals, protect our coasts from erosion. Also, the oceans are very valuable as a food source. Okay? If we deplete that, we'll end up in a terrible situation. We only have one planet. These animals and Plants are our life support system. We have no choice. But I also think it's very important to recognize 
We are all in this together. We're all connected. Some of our previous speakers have mentioned this. And to go with the emotive impact, I think it's worth it just for the sake of it. Diversity is what makes the, the world such an interesting place, and it resonates with humans. We need nature on an emotional basis. So what can we do? We need to come up with some solutions. We can classify the solutions into two categories. There are two schools of thought. And conveniently, they're both symbolized on your bookmark today. The arrow can symbolize reduce. Reduce growth, reduce the human population. I'm not talking for exterminating us. That might happen without us wanting to. But we have to stop rampant growth. Reduce our footprint, reduce our impact on the environment, especially the, well, the negative impact. Reduce consumption, recycle, reduced waste, uh, marine litter to uh, greenhouse gases, all linked to waste. So this is the first school of thought. Maybe a little bit, you could see this as going back in time a little bit to when things were not so bad. The second school of thought, let's find some technological fixes, okay? Let's use alternative energies. Let's make our cars cleaner. Let's use resources in a different, more sensible manner. Can we fix the damage done? Are there ways? Genetically modified organisms, maybe. Nuclear energy. I'm just throwing ideas, okay? Can we fix climate change? There are some ideas there, too. I'm not saying they're going to work. I think, personally, I'm, I'm more of the first school of thought. But I think it's time for action. The time for measuring counting populations is over. We need to start doing something. And it will be you, our young students, and your children who are going to have to take on this challenge. I will finish by this saying, which I borrow from Marco Lambertini, who is the Director General of WWF. It is time for us to close the destructive chapter in our history. If we don't, we might find it's not only the end of the chapter, but it's the end, full stop. So I hope that's not too pessimistic, but thank you for your time and attention.